I know that this these games did not go the way that you would have wanted or anticipated. Yeah. But I have to say to you, congratulations for a job well done because I think the way you, the spirit of your team and the energy that you that you ladies have, there was something about it that made all of us talk mm -hmm. and made all of us more curious about women's rugby. Yeah. You know what I mean? Does it feel like in I know it didn't go the way you planned. Yeah. But does it feel like in some ways it is a mission accomplished on some level? I mean, it's it's kind of interesting because that's what my family and everybody been telling me. I've been getting so much so many DMs and messages like, "Hey, you didn't win, but you did so much for the game." And um I had people saying you did so much more than even a medal could do and I think uh, my teammates myself included like we put we put put in work on the field, but also through our social media and through TikTok. And I'm so happy that they uh, let me annoy them to be in my TikToks and, <laughs> and we got to show a little slice of who we are. I think that's what makes us so special that we're genuine and authentic on the app. Yeah. And uh, gave people an inside look to athletes being funny and athletes having fun. And also what the life is like here at the Olympics, right? Like what's life like in, in um, the Olympic Village? What, how you move through this space, this day, navigate this you know, a foreign country, the whole mm. deal. Um, it was really cool for you to take us on the trip the way that you did. Was there ever anything that you got back into the phone and you're like, mm, I'm not gonna post that one. I don't know if we're gonna post that one, ladies. You know what? I don't what? know if that's gonna make it. No, nothing. I kind of, sometimes I get embarrassed. Well, now I'm like known as the thirsty Olympian, which I can't say I'm that happy about. Um, <laughs> wait, wait. I know. Wait. There have been like articles, Alone Amar, the thirsty Olympian, and I'm like, oh God, oh, come on. The thirsty Olympian? Because I made one TikTok about a Romanian volleyball team, and now everybody thinks <laughs> I'm thirsty. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it's wrong, but it hurts that it's in a news source, okay? Is it? But <laughs> in a source that someone can point to that and say, yes, this is who she is. Yes, but I think one thing was, so I just did a TikTok recently about how hurt I was after the game, and you know, my sisters talked to me and they're like, hey, do, are you sure you want to put that out there? Like, it's not your fault. And then I was like, well, on TikTok, I've been showing this happy side and showing like this lovable person, but athletes, and I think just to go deeper into who athletes are, we go through a lot and. It was, it's been a heartbreak. I, I've never been through a heartbreak as much as what I've been through um, really? these that's past how you, days. That's how you would describe it? Yeah, I'm, I'm in a lot of pain, like, uh, mentally, emotionally. And um, I think it was kind of cool to let my followers know that, like, athletes have humor, but we're also... Human. Yeah, human. That's so true. You know, as, as we've been seeing in the media with Simone Biles... Um, what do you think? I was, I was so proud of her. I, I don't know what she goes through. Um, and she is such a, a beacon for the Olympics and her sport. And even just from what I've experienced now, it's like... Mental health is so key because I can say I'm hurting inside as well. And um, so, how are you prioritizing that healing? How are you making sure, right? Because like that—that yeah. that was the signal that we all got really with Naomi Osaka and uh, Simone Biles mm -hmm. is that when we notice these things, it's up to us to act on these things. Yeah, you know, to protect ourselves, to reinforce ourselves, to heal ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it's just taking some time. It's—it's it's been connecting with my teammates. I think. After the games, I almost didn't want to because I uh, like had trouble looking them in the eyes, and so it's been just trying to connect with them in little ways as possible, in like the littlest ways, and even making eye contact. And then it's been talking with our sports site guy, uh, reading even the messages people have been leaving me. So I'm healing, and and I it's also been through TikTok. I've started to make TikToks again, and I'll share those later. Just it's a way to get my mind off it and share share with you all. Yeah. And while well, through the process, again, showing that, that human element of the Olympic spirit, mm -hmm. right? We all, we all know the triumph. We all see the triumph. Yeah. But there, it's a road. Oh, and yeah. And it's not always a straight line. No. It's not always a straight line. And I think that's what was cool is that we, we praise the gold medalists. And, of course, you know, America, we love winning. And also, but there's so many athletes out there who I don't think you can say one athlete deserves it more because we all work so hard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the teams in rugby who did win – they deserved it as much as I think we would have deserved it to win. So um, it was just cool to show, and it's it's been a cool experience. But the Olympics are tough. It's it's, it's stressful. Tough. Well, you, you, <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's stressful. I was when like, the voice goes up, yeah, you know you made it. Like, okay, wait. So tell me this because it's it's so interesting to think about uh, Simone Biles in a, a sport that like I mean it just beats up your body. Yeah. Um, also rugby, you have even described it as an unforgiving sport. Oh, I would say absolutely. It's 14 minutes, and it yeah. is brutal from the moment it starts until it ends. Yeah, no, it's 14-minute game, so it's really like 
you think it's just a short time, but so much can happen in it, and it could just be the way the ball bounces, the one mistake you made. So it's very unforgiving, a lot of injuries. You know, you could be in one tournament in the first two minutes, I've hurt myself. So it's like we, we go through a lot to play the sport we love, and um, it's never kind. It's not always kind to you. I believe it's beauty, beast, Beast Beauty Brains. Yeah, Beast Beauty Brains. Yeah. Tell me about this this hashtag. Tell me about this uh, social media kind of energy you got. Yeah, so I wouldn't have called myself a social media person, but I think my, all my teammates would. And I was in the van one day a couple years back with one of my teammates, and we were just kind of like talking about stuff. And she's like, oh, Beast Beauty Brains should be your hashtag. And I was like, that's great, because one thing I want to show is that rugby is a very physical, tough sport, mm -hmm. but also we're such beautiful beings. So we're beasts on the field, but then we're beauty. Like, I love wearing lipstick. I love wearing makeup and having fun and going out. And mm -hmm. we can define our own femininity. And then brains, I am a registered nurse. <laughs> so, so I am highly intelligent. <laughs> I did get my degree. Uh, uh, whatever. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> I think it's just that we're, we're all rounded individuals. And uh, I'm an athlete, but I'm so much more than that, too. Yeah. I, I think it was... Was it a, a letter your father wrote mm -hmm. where he was talking about you being, the, he, you will always be his little girl. You will all yeah. be, always be this, who, I mean, just cried oh, and waterworks. cried, just cried, yes. yeah. just a crying baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that you will always be his little girl, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, no matter what happens yeah. here and beyond. To, to have that kind of support of family, what does that mean to you? It's really the reason I do it, to be honest. Really? Um, I just want to make them proud. I, I want to give my mom something to post on Facebook, you know, to be get everyone proud about. Um, my dad and my mom work so hard. Um, my dad's a rugby guy. My mom's a nurse as well. So I kind of took a little bit from both of them. And wow. my sisters are my biggest supporters. So... Um, Is it all girls? All girls, yeah. It's a lot of women in the house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm the rugby player, so I'm like, he kind of won, to be honest. <laughs> I'm the Olympic rugby player. You got, <laughs> Dad, you won. Yeah. You get the gold medal. Oh, he, he's so proud. And I, I did a recent post where it's like, one thing he taught me is to never tone myself down. And I think that's mm -hmm. what's been so key in this Olympics. Ooh, so that's I, good. That's good. I know. <laughs> My personality can be a lot. Like, you, we've seen on TikTok, I can be funny and I can be loud. And so... Sometimes I get a little inward on myself. I'm like, oh, maybe it's too much. But then my dad's like, no, you Live never take up space. Take up um, space. Never, never turn yourself down for anybody. And I think that's what's really resonated with people is they're seeing somebody who's being authentically themselves and being funny and um, also doing amazing things like going to the Olympics. This is like the most diverse games that's happened. Mm -hmm. there's, there's more women competing than ever before, yeah. an, I believe, in, a, in a, uh, an Olympic Games. What does it mean to be here representing you know what I mean? Badass women doing badass things. Yeah. Uh, my team are composed of the most amazing women I've ever met. We're a group of diverse. We just show, we show who America is truly. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful for that. And I think that we're showing young girls what they can do and how powerful they can be while also being feminine, beautiful, whatever they want to be. Mm -hmm. and um, But then we're going to go out in the field and we're going to stiff arm them. We're going to stiff arm you in the face. In the face. And then we're going to put lipstick on and we're going to be fine. We're doing this thing called the Tokyo Take. I'm going to keep it kind of quick. Okay. It's really up to you okay. how fast we go. Okay. Okay. One person. I'm going to go one celebrity you wish were here to cheer you on. One celebrity I wish was here to cheer me on. That is tough. Who do I like? Who do I... Okay. So, let me think. Let me, think. <laughs> let me, think, let me think. Um, think of some shows you like, some musicians you like, some movies. Movies. You know who I love? Who? J Lo. Oh my God. Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez is so multi talented. Uh huh. She is. Her movies are multi, my favorite. Multi hyphenated. Multi hyphenated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Made in Manhattan. Amazing movie. Amazing movie. Wedding planner. Iconic. Great movie. Yeah. So. I mean, honestly, her. Yeah. If we're gonna be Jennifer Lopez. I think it's Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> yeah, because I, 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 well, I play her songs constantly in the locker room, and I'm like, if anybody wants to fight me, I will fight you to the death that J-Lo is amazing. So J-Lo. Who, who wants to fight me? Who wants, I love that you walk around in the village. Who wants to, who wants to fight me? J-Lo's amazing. <laughs> she can sing, she can dance, she can do everything. Uh, yeah, so I guess it's J-Lo. Okay, okay, easy peasy. Uh, if you could be cast in any current television show, what would it be? <clears throat> okay, so I would say Love Island, just because I know I would kill at that. I you would. You really? Oh my gosh. My head would be turned constantly. Le on um, a swivel, on a swivel. Uh, 
you know? <laughs> Just like the fittest bird in there, but also I the know that I would, bird in there. I would make an absolute fool of myself, and I would do something just like you know. I say I would never do that, and then I would do, do it, it immediately. And my sisters would be like, "Gosh," so I I can't do Love Island just because I know myself. Listen, we know some of the producers at Love Island. No, hey, don't. Hey, I know I'm gonna do something stupid. Our girl, Logan, get her go. No. Hey, no, hey, holler at her. Get her on TikTok, and we'll get make it happen. Okay, fine. Fine. Love Island? You sticking um, with it? I, I, you know what? That or I do think I could be an actress, an actor, if okay. you will. Okay, okay. Um, what if you had to, what, what, film, I'm television? I'm just going to say like like a Wonder Woman, Black Widow thing. Oh. Well, because my, my next question to you was going to be who plays you in the movie of your life and 100% it's Gal Gadot. But yeah, can, she get the, can she do the like, accent? She just would have to gain like 60 pounds. But other than that, I think she's going to kill it. Yeah. <laughs> She would do well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a lot of, yeah. Got, you yeah, know, we're, yeah. a little, we're a little different. <laughs> but uh, I think it would be her. I love a good Anne Hathaway. Angelina Jolie, dare I say, but. Oh, oh. Again. Do people give you Brooke Shields? Do people give you People Brooke give me Shields? Brooke Shields all the time and they give me Jennifer Garner. So maybe it's Jennifer Garner. Do you see it? Yeah. Like, but Jennifer Garner, like, <laughs> Jennifer Garner, like, alias days. Yeah, okay, yeah. But actually, you know what? I could do that, do the, do this one more time. Whoa. Yeah, it's spitting image. Whoa. I know, I know. <laughs> it's like if Brooke Shields and Jennifer Garner had a baby yeah. and Gal Gadot was like, yeah. nanny. No, yeah, no, absolutely. Right, because it's the sass, yeah. it's the look, it's the whip, yes, yeah. it's the eye. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. No, I, know. I think I'm in love. I think, it's okay. I it's think, completely normal. It's, it's a thing you do. Yeah. It's a thing you it's do. It's been happening to a lot it's of people recently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Let's see. Um, tell me this because I feel like uh, this is, it's a, it's a toughie. This was a, this was a tough year yeah. for everybody. Yes. Uh, this is a tough Olympics in particular. The weather, the, the travel, the condition, right? Mm -hmm. The postponement. Mm -hmm. What's been the lesson for you? Like, what's the thing I think you'll look back years from now and be like, damn, that was my time in Tokyo? I think for me, it's that nothing is ever guaranteed. And I think if you're working your life for like one thing, mm -hmm. that we were working so hard for just the Olympics, but the Olympics are such a small part of my life. And actually, I'm kind of learning for myself right now because it's such a small part of your life and you have so much more to look forward to. So to me, the COVID became a good time just to work on myself because I didn't know when my next tournament would be. I didn't when I would know when I'd get to play again. So it was just going to the gym, was working on being stronger, fitter for myself. So COVID saw me a lot. Yeah. She can leave now. I'm but, saying, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, on your but, way out, on your you way out. Know, you know, we're good. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's been a tough time. It's been a tough time for everybody. Every athlete worked so hard and it, it's so inspiring what they've done and to um, how they've gotten there, so. It's pretty incredible. The fact that you also just told yourself exactly what you needed yeah, to hear. Yeah, no, I kind of did. It's kind of. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, wow. It's kind of cool. chill, yeah. But you know it. I do know, so like I know lean, it. Like, lean into that. Like, you yeah. know that. Trust that. Yeah.